Hey, what's going on guys? Joe here coming at you today from Town Hall 9 with my top five Town Hall 9 three-star attack strategies that you should be working on. Uh, we're going to take a look at the bases and why these attacks are actually successful. If you pick up these five or understand these five attacks, you should be quite successful at Town Hall 9. Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. All right, so number one must be the Witch Slap. Hands down, week in and week out, you see it in competitive league gameplay, as well as in the tournaments that we've been running here on the channel. You see the Witches quite a bit. Now, this army right here is just a generic army uh, or one version of many armies when it comes to a Witch Slap or some type of Witch Army. Go wee wee, something like that. Uh, but anyways, when it comes to the Witch Slap, highly popular. And it's on bases like these where the air defenses are all kind of grouped up. They're all on the other side of the base. Or they are uh, out of reach of the air defenses or the uh, healers. So the healers stay on the outsides of the base with the Witches and are completely untouched. The success of this attack is really based off of the healers surviving with the Witches and carrying the Witches on the outside flanks. So when it comes to you know actual troop composition or troop dropping, starting with your healers, Step one, getting the uh, witches and healers on the two flanks uh, that you decide to go in on, uh, allowing them to work, allowing them to funnel, taking out structures on the outsides of the base. That way you know that your king, queen, golem, bowlers, and any other supporting cast of troops will actually go into the central corridor of the base and gut the base, taking out air defenses. That way the witches and their healers do survive throughout the raid. Now, as this one continues to progress, uh, we've already got witches and healers that have cleared both sides, both flanks, and really just set it in perfectly right here for our golem, barbarian king, archer queen, and a couple of those wizards to actually go into the base with the jump spell. No need for wall breakers. A rage spell will be used in order to carry the troops through, speeding them up, powering them up stronger to get them to move deeper to the opposite side of the base. There is an additional uh, jump spell in this composition to carry our troops to the opposite side of the base. There, uh, The clan castle houses baby dragon uh the wizard and witch combination so there is poison spells in the composition specifically for that and the archer queen will assist with taking down those troops the bowlers do a great job from inside the base taking out structures on the outside of the base and basically assisting our witches so if those bowlers aren't there to assist the witches they're going to have a really really hard time taking down tesla farms like that so they did play an integral role in the army composition here but again no there is no set army uh you know, uh, composition, excuse me for that. There's no set army composition for every single base. You have to kind of tweak some things. Uh, you can pick this army and use it, but you might have to make a few adjustments on how many jump spells you're going to take or a heal spell, stuff of that nature. So anyway, as this one wraps up, this is by far number one attack strategy at Town Hall 9 for 2017 so far. The year's not up yet. But this attack strategy is not going away anytime soon and is still very, very reliable for you Town Hall 9 attackers and definitely one of those ones you should add to your toolbox. Let's go ahead and get into number two, guys. All right, so our number two army, hands down, is a hog rider attack of some form. Uh, golem, hog riders, maybe bowlers in your clan castle, maybe max hog riders in your clan castle. It really depends. But the same rules apply every single time for ground uh, maneuvering and attacking, taking out the enemy clan castle and also taking out the enemy queen. If you can get these two things down with a hog rider attack of some form and you are uh, patient with your hog drops and paying attention to where you drop your heal spells, you will be successful as a Town Hall 9 uh, with the hog rider. So as this one gets started, uh, you must have perfect funneling in order to get into the base. You have to be patient with your attack, uh, being able to clear the trash ring structures. In this case here, we have two golems to tank for our wizards. Looks like we have six wizards here on the map right now, taking down structures in order to funnel that barbarian king and queen towards the core of this base. That's the idea, is to actually get into the base taking down the enemy queen and taking down the enemy clan castle. It's a repetitive trend over and over and over again. Every time you see a hog rider attack, you must get these things down in order to be successful. So the barbarian king is here working on that enemy queen. Uh, the queen is on the outside of the base using her tank. So the poison spells are down for the dragon and the balloon that are in the clan castle here. And there's a few wizards in there. You can't really see them, but there are wizards in there working on taking down the balloon and also taking care of that dragon. Now, once that dragon falls, uh, he comes in with his hog riders out of the clan castle. He's got hog riders from the clan castle, max level, as well as his level fives 
from his actual army composition. Now you see how he's tying these heal spells together as they go through the locations of dense uh, high DPS uh, defenses in the Teslas and the Archer Towers, uh, also dealing with the Skeleton Traps. That's also another key thing that could cause disruption in your Hog Rider attack, the Giant Bombs, the Bomb Tower, as well as the Skeleton Traps. Now, the Skeleton Traps are chasing the Hogs, but he has a lot of Hog Riders, and he was able to su successfully... Uh, take care of the final defenses on this attack. Now, when it comes to the actual cleanup, you know, having a few minions, having a few uh, uh, wizards in the composition to assist with the cleanup uh, and, and assisting those hog riders is what is going to lead to a successful hog rider attack. Uh, it's really just based off of your hero levels and getting in on those key things, taking care of that enemy queen and taking care of the enemy clan castle, and you should be successful with hog riders. All right, for number three, we have the Gobolo or Gobo Laloon, whatever you want to call it, some form of Laloon army. Um, they are repetitive, but they take a lot of skill or a lot of practice, to be honest with you guys. You, you just don't pick up balloons and become perfectionist with them right off the bat. On this attack or this base here, with the two grouped up air defenses like they are down here in the south and then up here in the north, of the base. Uh, these are key contributing factors on why our attacker picked air and why he was actually successful with them. Also, another key factor of being successful with a lot low form of army is getting rid of the enemy clan castle as well as getting rid of the enemy queen. Now, how you intend to get rid of that queen, whether you decide to bring golems uh, and a few bowlers and your heroes to take her out, or you intend to take her out with skeleton spells. That's based off of the actual army and the location of the queen, what she's in between. Uh, if there's wizard towers next to her, bomb towers, probably not best to use a skeleton spell, but it really just depends on the base. In this case here, with this base, our attacker did use the golems, bowlers, heroes to take out the queen, clan castle troops, and the first two air defenses. And then on the back end of the attack comes in with the lava hounds and the balloons. So uh, starting out with this attack right here, he's got the golem down tanking for his wizards. He's got wizards up here in this location by the enemy queen uh, due to the fact that there are no point defenses uh, within range to pick off these wizards. So those two uh, wizard towers set back like they are. They can't reach the wizards on the outside of the base and allows for, for decent funneling up here on the 9 o'clock side of the base. Now that golem is able to tank for the wizards down here at the 6 o'clock and also allowing for the funnel to get that barbarian king, the queen, and the bowlers into the base. Now the clan castle does hound, uh, house a lava hound However, um, it wouldn't have really mattered on what was actually in the clan castle. There had, if there had been baby dragon, Valkyries, or something of that nature, there was a poison spell for uh, the, that situation. So as the lava pups are spread out in this, in this location, the wizard is going to assist with the, the archer queen in taking down those lava pups. And once the uh, queen, uh, once these two air defenses fall, you can transition into the lava hound and balloon portion of the attack. Now understanding the timing between the drop of your lava hound and the timing of when you're going to use a haste spell is really going to be coming you know comes into play with practice i can't really you know give you a justification on when to drop those it's just a, a matter of understanding the speed of your balloon and how to maneuver your balloons through the opposite side of the base using haste spells using a heal spell for the locations where there's wizard towers or uh, other air defenses that have not gone down. Now, when it comes to air defenses that haven't gone down, you have a very limited time frame on how long your balloons are going to last and when it comes to the wizard towers. So the wizard towers are very powerful versus the balloons and they will take them down in large groups uh, unless they're tied up like they are here in this attack where that balloon is tied up on that hound. Now, most of the time, you really do want the hound to pop in order to have the lava pups for the cleanup. But in this case here, our attacker here, PKZ, brings uh, minions as well as wizards to assist with the cleanup of this attack. So again, this is number three, some form of Lava Hound uh, balloon form of army. Uh, you see them week in and week out, but by select attackers who are very proficient with the air attack. Number four would have to be some form of drag low army, uh, whether you're using uh, the lightning spells and earthquakes to take care of the air defenses. If you can get rid of the air defenses 
on a Town Hall 9 base, the Town Hall 9 base will fall to Dragons. Now, how you intend to go about that is really up to you. This is not necessarily one set army. Again, you would have to look at the base and determine things like this where you have the air defenses grouped up like they are and how you in to take, in, intend to take care of those, whether it's lightnings and earthquakes or in this case here, Coating Firefly is going to use a Queen Charge method in order to take care of the air defenses. So again, if you are struggling or you do not know how to Queen Walk, please go down in the comments below and let me know and we'll work on another series for that. Uh, but what he's going to do here is he's going to use that Barbarian King and Wizard uh, to take care of these structures in this crevice of this base to direct that Queen towards the south or towards the 9 o'clock of the base to take care of these air defenses. Uh, she is going to maneuver down taking care of this cannon and then he's going to use a Baby Dragon over here by the uh, army camp to again direct her into the base. What he's going to do here is going to use a Balloon in order to seek out seeking air mines that way he can keep his healers alive as well as waiting for the cannon to, to target that queen and take care of opening the compartment in order to get that queen to go into the base. He really needs that second air defense to go down. And then he's going to bring the dragons in from the north side of the base or the 12 o'clock side of the base. And when it comes to the dragons, they are tanky enough to where they can sustain and take on the enemy clan castle and the enemy queen by themselves. They do not need that taken out, taken out prior to them getting to that location. So the dragons under a rage spell, they're going to continue Continue to move through this base taking down the enemy queen uh, a poison spell is going to be dropped for the enemy clan castle which obviously houses some form of air troops uh, because it hasn't been pulled by the dragons now as that queen maneuvers down she is going to assist with taking out the third air defense she will not get down there fast enough in order to take out the fourth air defense so you will lose some dragons in this case but the dragons up here in the north are working taking out structures on the outside of the base as well as working their way around over over here on the eastern side of the base now the queen is going to meet up around she's going to take care of this town hall as well as taking care of the final air defense but either way regardless she does have her ability still intact and she would be able to clean up the rest of this base by herself even if we lost our dragons at this point in the raid so again some form of dragon army when it comes to bases that have the air defenses grouped up like there was on this base you don't necessarily have to queen walk uh there's other videos on this channel on how to address bases with the air defenses grouped and how you would go about using the dragons to take care of the base and three starring it so again coming in at number four would have to be a drag low army guys Coming in at number five would have to be some form of Valkyrie army. I know a lot of you guys out there love Valkyries. And now, if you understand how to use them, uh, they stay grouped up. They are absolutely devastating to a base. Now, uh, I chose this attack here from ILG. I absolutely love this attack here from ILG. It was very creative. Uh, now, there's multiple replays out there and uh, videos for some form of Valkyrie attack, whether it's a Red Witch army or the Grudgeonator. Uh, there's, uh, the, the thing about the Valkyries is if you cannot control them, I wouldn't recommend using them. Or if you don't understand how they operate, I wouldn't recommend using them. Now, in this attack here, he actually uses the minions to pick off trash ring structures around the base. Since the archer towers are sunk in really deep on this base, as well as the air defenses, they're really deep in the base and leaving uh, the cannons, the wizard towers, and the mortars, which doesn't really provide a lot of protection against air troops. So that's where the minions come into play. Again, very creative attack. Using the queen walk here, using the level of his queen uh, in order to assist in taking out half of this base. And then on the opposite side, he's going to use the golem, uh, bowlers, and valkyries, barbarian king to take out the opposite side of the base. So very, very creative way of taking care of this unique base. I don't really see, I haven't really seen a lot of bases like this one so i actually truly truly enjoyed this attack when it came to the diversity of troops and then the massive amount of valkyries love the redheads when they get to group together like this and they go through and just completely destroy a base against heroes valkyries are devastating they will destroy an archer queen quickly they'll take down a barbarian king quick quickly but when it comes to the actual air troops out of the clan castle like in this replay here with the baby dragon uh the valkyries will go down at the hand of a baby dragon if there's not any troops to take care of that baby dragon in this case here we did have a wizard there to assist and the wizard does take care of that baby dragon from the clan castle but take note of where our valkyries are at at this point in the raid they've already gotten to the opposite side and they're continued to move through and destroy with the barbarian king 
as you have the uh, the Archer Queen and Heroes on the opposite flank, uh, working alongside of them, taking out structures uh, for time purposes. And then you also still have the Golem or Golemite over here with the Bowlers assisting with taking down structures over there. So uh, our Valkyries are going to finish up. The Archer Queen is going to assist with the final cleanup on this base. Just a very unique attack here. And again, coming in at number five would be some form of Valkyrie Army. Can't really name a name on what is the best Valkyrie Army. It's really going to be up to the base and whether you understand completely how to use them. So this is going to wrap this video up for me, guys. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and thanks for watching, guys.